let's do this. Getting so many questions on like, what's a whiskey NFT? I don't know what to do. We're here to help you people. Just ask, ask. I'm gonna fire off some questions that I'm hearing from my followers and stuff. So one of the biggest things, and I think if we could just cut to the chase, like what is an NFT and how do we use that on Blockbar? An NFT is a receipt or a digital property right. Really, it's in a way for us to prove provenance and authenticity. It allows for full transparency. I think that's the real key. It really is similar to a confirmation email you would get when you buy a normal e-commerce good, right? You purchase a bottle of whiskey online through any e-commerce retailer. You get a confirmation of that purchase. The difference with Blockbar is it's open for everyone to see who made the purchase. And it really allows you to put your stake in the ground and be like, this was me at this time with this address. Like, think of it this way. I buy a ton of whiskey on auction. I bid, nobody knows who I am. Only the auction house knows. I win the bid, I get an email. What does that email say? Here's the receipt, pay me my money. When I pay the money, I can choose to store it with them and wait to get more bottles and then ship them to me to save on shipping. Or I can pay the shipping fee and bring it in. It's the same thing here, except it's cooler. It's new, it's hip, it's trendy. We're using the NFT, the non-fungible token as the receipt, but it's a real bottle. We store it for you in Singapore. When you're ready for it, you call it burning the NFT and then boom, you get the shipping. There'll be a shipping fee. There might be duties depending on where you live in the country. And if you choose, the whiskey will be delivered to the address of your choice. But no, this is your whiskey always. It's not our whiskey, it's your whiskey. We're storing it for you. Another really important thing to think about is the physical aspect of this NFT makes it different than a normal NFT, which you've been hearing around, I'm sure, in the news or in your social media. A great way of even just understanding NFTs without the physical, I think it's important to notice that people are already valuing digital goods, right? If you think about a Twitter checkmark, or you think about 100,000 followers, or you think about someone buying a skin in Fortnite, right? So an NFT is actually allowing someone to now own that digital good. Instead of you losing your Instagram account, you have no way of capturing those followers. You can now actually transfer that digital property. What makes Blockbar really interesting is we wanted to show that not only is there these digital goods that for the most part, it's a new, it's a volatile asset class. We don't know what most of them are gonna look like in 10 to 20 years. We really wanted to use this technology to attach the physical good to a digital good and allow for the ease of transfer of those digital goods, right? If you buy traditionally a whiskey collection, just for you to list it, to sell it, to get people to even see it, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. We are actually allowing for the free market to now trade these traditionally high value asset classes that are illiquid till you find a liquid market for it, right? Till you put it up for auction. What's amazing is there's people on Blockbar that don't even have their NFTs listed for sale and people are offering them money already on it as bids. For me as a collector, the ability to, first of all, show up on the day and it's like standing in line guys to get Pappy Van Winkle, like outside the store when it gets released, except we're doing it digitally. It's first come, first serve, the bottles fly, and then I can choose what to do with it. Like, to be honest, like the bottles I've bought, I've left up there because I like seeing guys offering me bids and stuff like that. I'm not gonna drink them, not gonna lie. You know, I'm a collector. You know, I have my drinking whiskeys and I have my collecting. As far as I'm concerned, these are like first editions. The first time that a brand did something online, that's gonna be worth something. You can talk all the SH you want about it, but this is the future and once again, it's gonna be that guy who shows up in five years like, oh man, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have paid attention. Well, here we are, we're here to educate. The whole point is education, because once you see the education, you see that the risk is gone. If you don't buy your Pappy Van Winkles from a store, you don't know if the guy's burning them in his house and selling them online. You don't know where you're getting. This is direct. Nobody has touched this bottle. Nothing has been altered, the provenance is 100% back to the original source all day long. It doesn't matter how many times that bottle gets sold on the network, it's still that same bottle. 
So for that, as an investor, the authenticity, next level. And I think just on that point, I think it's also really interesting that you now have history of this bottle. You might find you had a very prominent collector that has touched hands of this previous bottle and it allows for new market discovery. I might want a bottle like Gavin owned, right? I might be willing to pay a premium. I think it's also you get to connect with other collectors in a better way as well. Another valid question. How do I redeem my bottle, aka burn the NFT? Like how simple is that process? The process is the click of two buttons. You can think about a crypto address the same way you can think of an email address. It's a public address. Anyone can send things to it, but unless you have the password, no one can get into your email. What burning an NFT is, is basically sending it to an address that just has a bunch of zeros, which means no one will ever have access to that NFT again, essentially rendering it gone. That's how we make sure that we don't lose the tether between this physical asset and the digital asset. So you burn this NFT on the blockbar.com site, it then causes a redemption of your bottle. We get the information that's relevant to ship it to you and you get your whiskey or your spirits or your wine to enjoy and drink. Because really we also believe that the best thing about this asset class is not only is it an asset, it's a consumable, fun, collectible at the very ground of it. One thing that Block Bar spent a lot of time doing is luxury spirits. I mean, I don't think we're putting anything up on there that's gonna be average. Nope. You know, there's, this is now the online digital whiskey store where they might not have a million different brands because they're not, they're getting them differently. They're getting them directly from the distilleries. The distilleries are part of this. You know, when we talk with the distilleries, traditionally, they've sent their bottles through a distribution model that you've all seen. Third one, duty free at airports. This is now the fourth. But the difference on this one is it's distillery direct. Now, you also, because we're dealing in crypto, we also deal in bank wires, which we'll, we'll talk to you in a minute um, about wallets, and we'll do that in a little bit down the road. But you have price variations on crypto. Crypto goes up, it goes down. So do, you know what? Depending on when you grab something, you may actually beat the market because it was priced in Ethereum. You know, we have a drop coming up shortly, and by the time you see this, it's done, it's already up and running. But Ardbeg, when we first announced it, Ethereum was like at 3,400. Now it's like 2,900 and they want one Ethereum. So you're technically $600 up if you choose to purchase it when it drops as opposed to when we released it. And, you know, and you couldn't have purchased back then, but this just shows you the fluctuations. Let's talk about folks, how to pay for your whiskey on the Block Bar platform. I'm getting a lot of questions. How do I do it? Oh, the process takes forever. Yes. Of course it does. Can you just go sign up for a credit card easily? There's no easy process in anything. And if you want to be part of this, just go through the process. We'll talk you through the process right now and how to fund your account. Funding your account on Blockbar is unique because we really wanted to allow for the easiest on-ramp, we call it, which just means how do I enter from my native currency to crypto and for us it's really we accept everything from credit cards and debit cards via a partner called moonpay wire transfers ethereum the native cryptocurrency that we're built on top of if you want to go on that route it's really as simple as buying the ethereum on coinbase or cash app or paypal soon fidelity and these types of investment houses will also have this on-ramp and sending it to what is called a non-custodial wallet. All that means is a wallet that you own. Think about it as your email address, right? It's your wallet address. It's where you store your digital goods, your digital goods that might be linked to physical goods, your Ethereum and Bitcoin. And we use one called MetaMask. There's also a Coinbase wallet that actually is super simple to set up if you already have a Coinbase account. If anyone is um, confused about what a Coinbase account is, you can think about it as your stock, or your investment um, exchanges. It's a very similar exchange to something like a Robinhood or like a Fidelity is, but just for crypto. Most NFTs you actually can't purchase with a credit card or a wire transfer. And we really wanted to make an emphasis of being able to do it the same way you would on any other website. It takes a second to get it all done, but we're here for you. We have a full-time concierge service. You know, we want you to get on the platform. I'm really trying to push as many people get on the platform, but be ready because it's only getting bigger and better.
Like we've got some crazy stuff coming down the pipeline that you're just not going to want to miss out on. I was on a call this morning where you were talking about a 48-year-old really well-known scotch. There's Japanese whiskeys coming down the line. This is an opportunity to go back to the good old days and be first in line to buy whiskey before anyone realized, oh shit, this whiskey is worth something. So people are getting deals. I'm sure you saw our Buffalo Trace, $60,000, but for six liters, that's a steal. Another question that I sometimes get, what happens once I buy it and it's in my virtual bar? Is there any chance I could lose it in my virtual bar? The way we do it with Block Bar is set up in a way where the chances of that happening is near to none. Really, it comes down to us securing the assets within our website, and we have a bunch of fail-safe ways of making sure that that doesn't get taken out of your wallet. Always want to make sure that if you are setting up a non-custodial wallet, your password seed phrase is on a piece of paper that you own. But if you're coming on and you're using the wire transfer, the debit card, you really can be sure that Blockbar has a native wallet that is set up for you. The keys are completely stored the same way you would have it something like a bank. You can be sure that there's going to be no way of losing the assets. But I will say that the point about the seed phrase and the recovery phrase in general in crypto, I would say is a very important thing. You wouldn't give the keys to your house to someone, right? And you wouldn't give your password to an email to someone. So really being safe about that. Great. Thank you for addressing that. So next question is, if a bottle is priced in Ethereum, but I don't have a Coinbase account and I don't have any of the means to create or the understanding, I can still just wire you money, right? A hundred percent. Um, like Gavin said, we do recommend people do that a little bit earlier, just given the fact that wire transfers take longer. That's one of the benefits of something like Ethereum, right? If you want to send a wire transfer, it could take a day, it could take two days, right? Depending on if it's on a business day or not. Having Ethereum allows for that quicker transfer. But if you want to do wire, we are more than happy to do wire. And the same way you would send any wire, you would send it. All of the Ethereum would be happening on the back end. So you wouldn't even have to worry about that. And you don't physically have to own cryptocurrency. Even though the whole platform is built on that, if you don't feel comfortable at this point, we take good old fashioned cash and credit cards. You can pay for it. Don't feel like, oh, I can't do that because I don't own any, I don't understand this, but you want the bottle? Talk to us. We'll help you through this. It's all done on the back end. It's really just as easy as buying in and purchasing anything else. It's also important for people to understand that we're using crypto because we do want to allow the consumers that do own crypto to be able to send things faster. As this technology evolves over the course of five to 10 years, it'll be less janky and it'll actually feel more like the wire transfer. You wanna get on now because it's early. Not everyone knows about this. You can see, right? We, we know people that saw Bitcoin and didn't act on it. And Bitcoin was a lot more complicated to buy back then than it is now with a simple click on Coinbase. So we really think that it's gonna be similar. Right now we wanted to allow everyone to hop on board, which is why we really wanted to have credit card. We're a platform in the same way Amazon wants to provide consumers the best experience, the cheapest experience at the best price and the fastest shipping. That's where Blockbar's head's at, right? It really wants to give the consumer access to these drops that previously would have been hard to accumulate or even find and at the best possible price. That's really the emphasis on Blockbar. So really thinking about it as this is the marketplace for things you love, right? And you're getting access to these collectibles that are a beautiful asset class that you can connect with other collectors over, you can drink them, you can buy them early, they're historic. So really thinking about how is it better for the collector is where our heads are always at. And we do understand it's very confusing at first. This technology is similar to when the internet first came out. Um, the computer is asking me if I want to log on and it's now telling me to phone up the main press or computer. You would have told someone, magazines, TV, radio, your pictures is all gonna go on this thing. In, you know, the 1990s, 
It was confusing at first. We really think that it's just gonna take time for people to buy a whiskey bottle, collect it, have it redeemed. And once they have that first experience, even just collecting the NFT that represents the physical asset, we see a complete change and a click in their brains. Really just having patience and understanding that this technology is new and it's normal to feel confused. Totally, I mean, I remember people said, I'd never put my credit card online. I'd never put my social security online. I'd never do any of that. Now they're filling out forms all day long with this stuff because the technology is there. It really wouldn't be in anyone's interest to not do that. We're dealing with established global brands who trust us with their liquid and we're trying to get more people on the platform. And one of the things of being on the platform is there's perks. You know, I think we don't talk about that enough. If you are registered on the platform, like right now we're doing something for the, the F1 in Miami. You enter, you have a chance to go out there, you know, for three days in May to watch the F1 in Miami. This is a great point you bring up, Gavin, when people ask, why are you doing it via NFTs? is because it really allows the brands to have a direct relationship and reward their early supporters. It's amazing because the brand can actually know, wow, this supporter was there at this first release and this supporter really cares about us. So we're gonna go above and beyond and provide them a luxury experience. So we've done perks from having exclusive tastings at distilleries, being able to have virtual classes describing the actual liquid, to have physical dinner parties that show you the whole process of the liquid. Since we mentioned that the access to these drops are hard to come by in the first place, we've been experimenting with giving the people that are already block bar NFT holders or block bar NFT collectors of a specific brand to have the first right of access. We did 10 bottles before that was only available to the block bar NFT holders. And those bottles came with an extra experience of going to the distillery. And that was only available for the block bar NFT holders. We're also planning live events in New York for NFT NYC and block bar NFT holders will get access to that with free bar. And it really does allow for this direct direct to consumer relationship. Think of it like this, like I have Amex Platinum, Founders Card, Priority Pass. I mean, I have all of this stuff because I travel a lot and I like the perks, to be honest. You know, the automatic upgrades on my airline, the automatic upgrades on my rooms, like the brands reward me for being part of the network. We're doing the same thing in Block Bar. When you're on our platform, you're part of a club and the brands are starting to recognize, like Karma was saying, they can reward you directly. If you took that leap of faith and bought in to X, we can talk directly to you. It doesn't mean that you have to burn your NFT. Some of the perks are like, hey, you know, the distillery is like when you get that bottle, you know, it's part of it. So you will have to redeem that bottle to go to the distillery. I mean, you're talking about going to Scotland and sitting down over there, you wanted the whiskey anyway, like, here it is, it's yours. I think this is a great point, Gavin, because you mentioned Amex and these rewards programs that either you have a membership for and you get perks. This is where it really becomes amazing to have the NFT because now the perks you're getting, that membership that traditionally you would just be an expense, is actually a tradable asset itself. Imagine you could have sold your membership after you used it, or you had season tickets and you went to the whole first season, but now someone values your historic moments of having the first season tickets ever. You see all the time on eBay, Beatles tickets that went for a lot of money or some collectible of a concert or an early premiere to a movie. We're now allowing for that itself to be your property. You own your membership now. It makes it even easier. You don't have to go take this and then go put it up on eBay. Exactly. Or go find some obscure way to get rid of it. Like it's all handled on Block Bar. It's all handled under one roof. And I don't have to be like, oh shit, I got a deal. Now I got to figure out how to do it. You guys do it all. Be there, be on the platform, commit, purchase it. And then it's up to you to choose. If you need the money, move it. If you don't, let it sit. No matter what, you're in the power position. Like we said, it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of getting your hands dirty, but we do see that once you have your first experience, a lot of the light bulbs click in the head. Yeah, like Gavin said, like it's really about being there, being willing to also embrace new technology and change. And knowing that these brands that are huge distilleries 
are already adopting this technology and they're working directly with Blockbar. And I'll go back to the Amex Platinum example because I think that's a good example. I like to use the lounges. I like the upgrades. I like the perks. So I have no problem paying whatever I pay, the $600 a year. But I remember when it first came out, people were like, oh my God, that's way too much. Stop thinking of the money to the best of your ability and think of the potential of the experience. And if you're not there yet, it's totally fine. I just encourage you to register to get on the system so when the light bulb does click, you can move efficiently and effectively and fast. We are talking to everybody. I mean, you do not go get a Buffalo Trace six liter OFC if you are not the premier luxury spirits in this space. No one, that was over $200,000 yeah. of product that moved that way. Unheard of. Glenfiddich, Patron, Penfolds, Delmore. You know, Delmore, I went to that tasting of the, the decades. I went to it in Santa Monica and when you guys put that up, it was like, whoa. And we really want to spend time educating. We will do tutorials in the future where we'll show you a computer screen, how to do it step by step. But I can't stress it enough. If this is overwhelming for you, we are here to help you. And any kind of negative feedback that you have, talk to us. We won't put your name out there, but I'd rather take the time to explain it to you because I see a lot of comments out there that aren't educated comments. You know, they're just plain silly. And that to me is just like, hey, education can help overcome. Like this is just getting started. That's the opportunity that I see. Number one, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's all about the money. The experience is here. Mm -hmm. Great. The money and the potential upside to be first in on some of these spirits that we do, you can't. I mean, that's it. The first. It's super historic and you made a great point around people being concerned about putting their credit cards online. We're really empathetic to people's concerns because the NFT space does have a lot of opportunists enter it, as you see with anything that has media attention, right? So using these NFTs to actually show the real life problem solving and utility that they can have, feel free to ask any questions. We understand concerns. If you look back in the 90s, in the 2000s, around social media or the internet, you will see the same comments. Social media is a fact. The internet is a fact. The internet is a scam. Social media is a scam, right? So we understand these concerns because they're right in a sense, right? There is scams in NFTs, the same way there's scams in everything else. Anything right? else. So really, it's just about, this is a tool, this is a technology, and we're finding that a lot of people see expensive pictures being sold and expensive art and really are conflating the word NFT with digital art, where the best way of thinking about NFTs is they're a digital property, right? You buy a house, you can go on MLS or whatever the public database is to see who owns the house. The difference is, is that you need to be a realtor to see who owns it and you need to have certain credentials. If you go onto Amazon, you could see I purchased this, but you can't see what other people purchased. And for us, it's really important that that's all transparent. You can see who's collecting what. You don't have to give your identity away. It could just be an address, but it really allows for that transparency and you can be sure that Blockbar is holding all of those bottles. We're gonna be releasing soon. We have a warehouse video where the bottles are stored. We're gonna be releasing soon unique video of your bottle. So you can at any time see your bottle being stored. And really the receipt is just a way of, it's a technological way of making the whole process simpler, more liquid and better for you as a collector. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video down below. We'll be covering all things Web3 and NFTs, as well as fine wine and luxury spirit NFTs. And feel free to leave a comment down below to let us know what you'd like to see next. If you're interested in exclusive spirits and wine NFTs, then head on over to our marketplace at blockbar.com. See you next time.